Hi and welcome to the seventh episode of Catalog or Fusion 364. No, wait a minute. Yeah, Fusion 364 3D printing. So today we're going to do something a little bit more special. Uh, I want to show you how I think and how I work when it comes to scan data and Fusion 360. It's not a really common workflow for me, but it happens from time to time. And especially with the growing amount of hobby 3D scanning and mesh models in, in uh, per se, I really want to show you how you can kind of utilize that a little bit. So this workflow will be kind of um, focused, so only for a certain type of models. We'll probably be deep dive into uh, this subject a bit more later on in the series and uh, just in general. But today we're going to use a 3D scan file from an Einscan S, which is a very nice um, automated uh, scanner which within around 20 centimeters and 20 centimeters tall. And the object that I've scanned is a quadcopter propeller. So we're gonna bring that in and get to work. Now, first of all, when you upload a SDL file, you have to uh, upload it. Let's see um, where I put it. Probably put it around here. We have there an Einstein propeller. So this is the SDL format, which is the most common format for uh, for uh, what's it called for a 3D scan. So usually all your scanners they use a bunch of raw data and stuff like that, but then they send out an SDL file, which is the same type of file that you find in Thingiverse and Pinshack, for example. So when you download something that you really want to make a copy of or make a new model of, but there's nobody giving you the uh, the original model, there are a few tips. If there's a, a really low amount of mesh data, then you can use a BREC con conversion. So you convert the ESDL files into something else, uh, a workable model, or I should say patches. So that doesn't work in this case where we have a propeller, which is uh, has a hundred thousand of surfaces. So it's a really, really detailed scan, or at least a, a really detailed mesh. So we're gonna bring this in, and I'll I'll show you how it looks because it kind of looks like mess. All right, so I'm just gonna open this file here before the preview is, is done. Let's see. There we go. I'm just gonna close this panel. Well, as you can see here, this consists of a lot of small points. This is just way too much to do any sort of like... Uh, where we repair or we convert this to some sort of body. I mean, convert type, quad mesh to T-spines, but this isn't, this isn't quad, so that doesn't even work. So, there's no way we can do that. Um, now, first off, this was scanned in this position, that is why we get uh, the orientation like we do. So we have some, I think this is yeah, some clay or something is sticking it up. But we do get an axle, so we kind of want to keep that to make sure that we can, we can try at least to have some sort of uh, precision there. And we know, can know the measurements and stuff like that. I'm quite, sh quite pretty sure that this is M5 uh, bolt head here. But we have these three blades, you can see this blade here isn't the best scan. Um, this one here isn't, well, it's okay, but it's not the best one. We actually get the best one up here on top. Now, what we need to do first is more or less just take this body, or actually we should go into the mesh workflow. Um, but we want to move this, so I'm gonna orientate here. And as of yet, I don't know of any like special tools to do this, or to align these kind of um, scans or create like a proper reverse engineering tool. I really hope that's gonna come in the future, but today there's nothing available for me. So I'm just gonna eyeball this. So, uh, and let's make another, oops. Hello. Ooh, it's a little bit slow. Um, we want to, we do not have. Here we go, right click, move, and now we want to rotate in the other direction. So in this case, what is it, 5 degrees, or is that too much? Minus 7 maybe? 
pretty pretty spot on. Um, and then we do want to make one more just to make sure that that blade is uh, on the top here. That the blade is at least more or less. Let's see, can we make a set pivot to uh, maybe there? Can that be my pivot? Uh, I guess not. Don't know why. Let's see, five degrees. Looks pretty good. Maybe a little bit less. Four. Four is good. What? All right. So there we have it. Now, what we do want to do is to remove some of these um, uh, extra polygons. So first off, we can make. Uh, a plane cut. So the mesh body is this one. The plane is not that one. Could be. It looks looks kind of cool. Uh, it is actually this plane. Ooh, the computer is working hard. And we want to drag that down. This is really um, an effort for this computer but let's say okay that that will be good um, so I'm gonna click OK because I want to keep this the centerpiece but that's about it um, okay there we go now the tool here now is that we there, there we need to extract some um, some lines from this and there is actually tools to do just that so we should first of all I do want to move this up into origin 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 oh can't talk anymore or at least close close to the center now from here I'm just gonna close that we go over to the model part again so we're now back in the modeling stage I'm just gonna click save here so let's just save it uh, in case there's any crashes or stuff like that going on. There is a recovery tool. You should have the, all that enabled, but just to be safe. So there is uh, here in the sketch tool, we can go down to something called mesh and we have a create mesh, mesh selection. We will use this tool and I'll show you how it works. And after that, we'll be using this tool and then we'll go uh, ahead and create some, uh, some modeling from that. Um, so it's just as simple as it sounds. So we um, intersect and we have to choose a pretty good part. Let's say, let's say there as a first stage, maybe even a little bit further. I think that's going to be our first. So, okay. You can see that there is a line. So what this is actually doing is taking these polygons here and making a line, just just cutting it basically in middle. So we want to repeat that, um, and we really, really wish that it could like keep some of the settings, like for example the um, which plane I was using and, and stuff like that. Maybe there is, and I don't even know about it. Who knows? Um, so we do a few of these steps here, and it has to do a little bit more, almost like when you're doing a uh, form that we went through in, in some of the earlier stages. So you want to keep a certain distance between them, so add less detailed shapes, so, so around here the whole shape is a little bit less defined, there's less things happening, so I can keep a greater distance. But down here a lot of things are happening, a lot of things are bending, so we want to keep a few extra slices down there. So we're just going to continue doing this for a few steps. Maybe one more or two more. Let's see. Do, do, do. Like that. And one more. Come on, come on, come on. And when I have this pretty far up. Not make too much. Like so. Okay, that's good. Now we can actually hide this body. And we end up with a lot of splines. Hmm, interesting. Now, 
As I said, the next tool that we will use is this one here called uh, under the mesh menu, fit curves to mesh selection. So before we do anything, we get a few tools here. So hopefully you can see these. You should be able to, it's HD. So we have a few, um, few different curve types. So in my case, I want to use a closed spline because I will use this spline as a uh, loft method later. But we also want to change the tolerance here. So in my case, 0.1 milli millimeter is probably okay, maybe even 0.2. Uh, it is going to be 3D printed. I rather have it a little bit, a little bit more curvy. So I'm gonna go ahead with that. Okay, let's try that again. There we go. Okay, we click once. Oh, we want to have this one. So now you see the deviation. I'm just gonna change that a little bit. Oh wait. There we go, now you can see that there, this is like a normal sketch. So when we click OK and we stop this sketch, we now have a spline that we can extrude and do things uh, with as, as usual. But we're not finished yet, we need to, um, to do this for a few different types. So maybe I should even add this button up here, so it's much quicker for us to work. So the settings in this case are now saved, so we can start off again. It does do this like camera roll every time because it creates a new sketch and the sketch will align to the, uh, to the two dimensional shape. Um, so just, you just have to kind of uh, withstand all that. So you see when I click on this, it wants to go up to the top here and let me play around with sketches, but that's not really what I want to do. Here we go, let's do it again on this one. Keep at it. Keep forgetting that I can't repeat that, that uh, command. Okay, I actually remember it this time. So there we go, and that's the last one. All right, so we have them all put together. If we want to, we could make some changes to these uh, sketches here. So maybe we'll start with the first one. Um, is there anything that we want to do with this one? Well, I think I'm pretty happy. Um, if we go to the next one, well, I could do like this. Maybe I want to uh, to make sure that we get the correct radius or something. Maybe I wanted to... Um, I should have this tool up here as well. Maybe I want to create like a little bit of better spline here. Um, that's not what I wanted to do. I wanted to do a spline. So let's say that that's what we want to do. We can do that, and we can trim this one here off. If we want to, but I don't think that looks good. But um, let's, let's just uh, keep it for now. And just make sure that we get everyone else back. So if you see any of those issues, or you want to control, let's say, the radius here a little bit better, uh, you would change each sketch. But the next phase here is to uh, actually create a solid from this. So we'll go into here under create, we'll make a loft. We'll start with the first one, move ourselves up, 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 and up, and finally close it off. Now, I would like to control this a little bit more because that doesn't look correct. I guess we can actually control it a little bit now. Control this radius here. And that looks much better. I'm gonna leave that there. Um, okay, so here we have a new tool. <laughs> Never knew about that one. Okay, so that looks good. Awesome. So now we have a form. Anyway, what I really wanted to do was to get this as a reference. And maybe even um, screw this down a little bit, or maybe can we press pull it? How would that work? Ah, it actually works pretty well. Let's just continue that shape a little bit so we get something to work with. And we go back here, we'll create a sketch plane, we'll 
unhide this. We'll probably create the sketch. Let's see, where is the middle? We're gonna eyeball it. Let's say that it's around that. It's pretty close. So something like that. This here should be to uh, make new body. So run that far and make it a two side. You could go all the way here. And of course create a uh, polygon shape here. Let's grab polygon. It seems very big. I think there's, I think there's an issue with scaling here. Um, let's just hide that again. There's some issues with scaling. Absolutely. Okay, we'll we'll fix those later. That's just what I wanted to do. And we want to finish this off by doing a, um, uh, 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 let's take this model here, let's create a pattern, a circular pattern, axis around, hmm, okay, we need to make a, axis through cylinder, there we go. Now we can create the pattern that we were gonna do. This one over that. And we want three because that was what is was in the original original one. Work. Don't lag out. Come on, you can do it. You can do it. Ooh. This could be bad. It could be really bad. So that happened. Let's see if things are backed up as they should be. Okay, so everything crashed, so I'm just gonna go ahead and do this again. I'll speed it up for you and we should be back to where we were. Will it work this time? No, it doesn't work. Interesting. So, um, that's uh, a bit of a fortune, unfortunate. Can we do anything about it? Let's just save again, because that kind of ruins my movie. <laughs> All right, uh, maybe there is a bug within this version. Okay, maybe I make this as a component. Let's call it blade. Let's uh, work with this one. Let's hide that one. Then we'll go back to this one. Activate that. Make a circular pattern. Object. Axis. Okay. Pull. Oh, okay, that worked. Now oh, it worked for some reason. Um, so do we have it? Now we can work with this file. Making a polygon. Now we don't have the measurements. I totally forgot about doing anything correct there. So let's just um, see if we can add those. So save, always save before doing anything weird. So we're gonna save, see if we can modify combining that with these tools. Uh, I want to keep them, just in case. I want to make new components. Ah, oh, awesome, that worked. Let's hide everything else. Hide everything else. Let's see, and now we get one body here. Awesome. Now, my question is, can I do a fillet here? So let's say five millimeters. Yes, I love fillets. How much, how much can we do? 25? Oh, it won't crash. Okay, let's remove that one. But let's add these ones. 
There we go, that's, that's looking mighty fine. So now it's very close to the original model. Now, what we could do if you want to uh, make sure that this is 3D printable, you could do a, um, a body split. So, so this is just in case you want to uh, be able to um, in case you want to try to 3D print this. By cutting it here, that will probably help you a little bit more. So by cutting here, you get a, a bit more grip here to print on. And you can use, of course, you, you probably need to use some support here, but it's, it's doable. So there we have it. That's how you create a propeller blade from a 3D scanner file. There we go. Now, um, I will be probably be printing one of these and trying it out, see how it works. But all in all, um, we're done with this guide. I hope you learned some about using the mesh as a reference and um, cutting the blades, controlling the flow here, making, making it look actually pretty good. I mean, if you do know about propellers and there's probably, maybe there's even some add-ons for that propeller. No, okay, there's no no for, for that, but you could use real tools to like optimize the flow. And I'm sure that if we like activate, let's see, where do we do that? Do we have anything here? Um, simulation. Okay, there's no, I don't, I don't have any tools for flow just yet, but you, maybe it could be interesting to do that. Anyways, so uh, that's it for this time. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed the, the videos overall. Let me know down in the comments if you have any thoughts, ideas, you didn't understand anything, it's too small to see, you don't get which software I'm using, which you probably should do, it's in the title. Um, but all in all, thanks very much for watching. Um, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.